So guys, welcome to Networking in Annapolis. Thank you all very much for coming this morning. Uh, I would like our co-host Lee Crumball uh, to please introduce our esteemed guest, Laura Rice. Laura Rice, what can I say about my good friend, Laura? Laura is an organizer and she's focused these days very much on helping businesses get their acts together. Uh, Laura and I have teamed up on client assignments. We're cooking up uh, a series of webinars that at some point you'll hear about. Laura is very talented. And I love it when we can actually disagree on something when it comes to organizing. That's fun. So Laura, tell us how we should manage our email. Sure. Thank you, um, Lee. And I love when clients disagree with me because it means that they're not just listening to what I have to say. And a lot of what I focus on is teaching my clients how to have an organizational and productivity mindset. Um, and what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for everyone else. That's okay right? It's about finding out what works for you. And that's why often um, I go to my clients and they're like, have you read this organizing book? And have you read that organizing book? And I have all of these books and I'm still disorganized, right? Because it's not one size fits all for folks. Um, so I, I, I love that we disagree because Lee, that's what works for you, right? It's not, it's not going to work for me. It's just really not. I, I have done the thing where I don't file and everything's in my inbox. And then I found the magic of filing and it works really well for me. Again, what figure out what works for you and stick with that. Uh, Chris says that this better be a good one. Okay, I'm working on it, Chris. <laughs> So uh, again, the Crux Learning Series, Productivity in the Wild. So if productivity is happening, let's call attention to it. And I named this, Can Your Inbox Ever Reach Zero? Because I think that's the question, right? We, ha we have that thing where we're like, oh my gosh, I made it down to zero emails in my inbox. <sighs> Thank goodness, there's this relief. And then the next thing comes in, right? So why is email management so hard? Well, like I said, we can't stop emails from coming in. You can stop your mail at the post office, right? You go away, you can put an out of office on, you cannot check your email, but the emails are all gonna be there whether or not you are checking your email, right? And each email kicks off its own chain reaction. Rarely is it a yes or no answer, and there's a hint, learn to write better emails and lose the stream of consciousness emails. And then time management and boundaries. <sighs> emails don't yell at us, right? Often items that are lower priority jump in front of those that are in your inbox because the person requesting them is there in front of you or squeaking louder, right? Um, they're going to come by and say, I'm going to just follow up on that, or I'm going to give you a call, right? And the emails really don't have that same level of escalation. So we tend to not pay as much attention to them. And then, well, <laughs> uh, then we end up just having them become those fires and that escalation. So hold on one second. I was struggling with that animation. Obviously, it didn't quite turn out right last night. But um, so being busy versus being effective. Do you ever focus on the smaller, quick emails and then the bigger ones are too hard because your brain is spent or they're going to take more time than you have? Raise your hand or feel free to unmute and share that, right? Yeah. We're like, oh, I'll just take care of these two-minute emails. And, you know, the whole thing of uh, David Allen says, you know, if it's just going to take two minutes, just do it. Well, first off, my clients think everything is just going to take two minutes, right? Even things that take 20 to 30 to 40 to three hours, right? Or you're only ever starting on the bigger items and then you never get to those smaller items, 
right? We're like, oh, I have this big project and then you have just these little things. And, and I think it's this balance of this being this, this, okay, we're busy. We're doing lots and lots and lots of things. I got so many things checked off my, my to-do list today, right? I made it, I responded to a hundred emails. That sounds a whole lot better than I worked on one big project for eight hours today and I only moved it this far forward. Um, but we need to strike that balance between those two, right? Those, those together make us have that balance between being busy and being effective in everything, um, but particularly email management. Uh, any questions so far? Feel free to pop them in the chat or raise your hand um, and I can go ahead and, uh, and call on you. Let me actually, I realize I don't have my participants up. There we go. Now I have my participants up. Um, so the 80-20 rule in time management and scheduling, uh, AKA, yes, this includes scheduling time to tackle your inbox. <sighs> Very important. Um, and you don't even have to file them, right? So Lee doesn't file his emails, right? But he does look at them and make sure that they're not items that he has to deal with, right, Lee? Lee's going, yep, yep. So. It's the folks that have 10,000 unread emails that have no idea what like ticking time bombs are in those emails that brings the stress, right? Lee has deemed those, okay, they're not even worth my time, right? But at least he knows, okay? Um, so 80% of the things will go wrong right? 20% of your things will go as planned. That applies to everything. Um, and of course, you know, I always say a great plan B means you won't need it, right? So we create our plan for our lowest performing day so that you can still get it done in the allotted time. And on our best days, we just breeze right through. I know some of this may be repetition for folks that have heard my presentations before, um, but I always go over these items because they are the basis of our time management, which then bleeds into our project management. And what is tackling our inbox other than project management, right? We're figuring out every new thing that comes across, we then have to rate it on our priority poll and decide whether it's delegated all of those types of things, right? So, and remember that our emails will always take either more time or less time than we think. Uh, there's no perfect guess, so, so plan for them to make more time. And then you can always use the time that you budgeted that you didn't need for those emails to work on a long-term project. Um, and that's what I hear from a lot of my clients is that they're spending all of this time in their email inboxes and they're not getting out to anything that's really those, those like, you know, this is going to move me forward projects. So um, plan for more time. And when you get it done in less time, go off and, and use that time wisely. So batching email review and processing. You should review or scan your inbox at least once a day to check for items that could be slipping through the cracks. So Lee, do you do that? Awesome, Lee says he does. Uh, anyone else do that three times a day, Lee says? Awesome, cool. Um, so what you can do, you can batch by sender, subject, or date received to help with the review, right? And so if you know, you know, a particular email is coming from a particular high level client and you know that you haven't had contacts with them or you haven't worked with them or worked on something for them in a little while, you're just gonna go back over there and be like, okay, is there anything that I need to make sure I go back on, right? Or did, you know, do I just need, has it been, three months since I've reached out to them. Maybe I need to reach out and check and see if there's anything. And I know that like CRMs will do that for you as well, right? But 
SDRM is only as smart as the habits that you have. Um, and so if you don't have these habits of inputting the information or processing the information that's coming to you, the CRM won't do that for you, right? Um, uh, John leaves his open all day, okay, and checks between each task. Uh, Amethyst does as well. We'll get to that in uh, just, a, just a couple slides. Um, know that the emails you receive may create follow-up items. And when I say may create follow-up items, they're absolutely going to create follow-up items, whether they're follow-up items for you or follow-up items for someone else. It's rarely the case that we get an email and there's not some actionable item for that. Uh, add reoccurring activity to your calendar to review your inbox and rinse, repeat, right? Rinse, repeat. Um, and again, I recommend filing and putting things in folders and, and doing all of that and getting down because out of sight, out of mind. So if, if it's out of sight, it means that I've, I've dealt with it. If it's in my inbox, um, I know that there's still something that's on my to-do list that corresponds to that. Um, and if it just gets too long, I, I don't know what I'm missing, right? Because I don't have time to go through that entire inbox multiple times a day, right? So file, file, file. Too many systems are hard to maintain too few systems and we don't know where to look for the information you need, right? So do you file by sender, project, by date, keyword, client? Anybody wanna share how the, if they file, um, how they like to file? We'll get to that in one second, I promise, John, I promise. Um, so uh, John says he has a few folders. Okay, saved emails is one of them. Okay, Lee says I copy important emails relating to clients or projects into a OneNote folder. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, Casey files by client and keywords. Uh, Michelle files by group and person. Okay, uh, Jim says he loves OneNote. Uh, John keeps samples of email marketing newsletters, Kurt files by client, um, Amethyst just searches for sender when I'm looking for something. Okay, so the pros and cons are, I often utilize a lot of the same verbiage when I'm writing correspondence to clients because that's how I talk. Right, and so I can have a keyword that comes up with way too many things, right? Because there's consistency in my language. Um, I, I file by client um, for my clients. When I I'm going client facing for a client and I have multiple clients of theirs, I then have subfolders for their clients so that I can keep their projects. And then of course, if I have multiple projects with my client's clients, I have folders for that as well. Um, and particularly for certain projects that are like done, um, they are done like by event. So I say like, you know, uh, easel 2015, right? So when my client comes to me and I was like, hey, what do we do? You know, I have that ready to go. I can send the file off, no problem. I'm not searching through a whole bunch of other because I've done like five or six years of easel, right? So it doesn't make sense to keep all of those in one folder. I can just go to easel 2015 and find whatever I need files in my files. And I wish I could show you my files, but there's unfortunately too much proprietary information in there. 
um, of clients and that kind of stuff. So um, I can't, but I can, I can happy to talk offline more about kind of all of that, um, how that works for me. But again, figure out what works for you and, and go for that. Uh, so John says, isn't that more of a CRM function? Can you clarify that, John? I'm just saying that go back into archival information to find files and data and transpondence. Isn't that really the uh, workings of a good CRM? So again, I, I, yes, right. But not everyone is going to have a CRM. Not everyone is going to, you know, do that. And if I'm, you know, on my cell phone, like I can just, pull that email up real quick and forward it to my client. And so that's worked for me. And again, it's what, it's what works for you. Right. Um, we don't, we don't make a complicated system just to make a complicated system. So uh, what is inbox zero? Well, this is the source is what is tech target.com. And um, so there's a misconception. Inbox zero is not about having zero emails in your inbox. Inbox zero was developed by Merlin Mann and zero is a reference to the amount of time an employee's brain is in their inbox. So how much time are you thinking about what is happening in there um, and, and how much time is spent kind of thinking about what your to-do list is in your inbox, right? Um, and, and Lee says, as man defines it, I agree with inbox zero. Awesome. Um, so basically there's five possible actions to take for each message. Delete, delegate, respond, defer, and do, right? And as man describes it, I absolutely agree as well. I 100% agree. It's, it's been conflated in, in the translation, right? Inbox zero, everybody's like, oh, I have to have zero emails in my inbox, right? Um, there are some things that I disagree with, though. So I'll, I'll uh, talk through those. Oops, sorry, sorry. Um, so it says, Sorry, I'm having trouble reading it because the, uh, what's it called, is showing. Hold on one second. It's covering. Uh, can someone read my first line? Because I can't figure out how to get Zoom to close. And it's Don't right. leave. Don't leave the email client open. There we go. Thank you. That's the audience participation portion of this program, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so don't leave it open. Okay, that's what he says, right? Inbox zero. Process email periodically throughout the day, perhaps at the top of each hour. Delete or, or archive. First, delete or archive as many new messages as possible. Forward, then forward what can be best answered by someone else. Respond immediately. Respond to any new messages that can be answered in two minutes or less. Move new messages that require uh, Mariana says, don't leave the email client open. So basically close your email program, whatever you're utilizing for that, and don't just have it consistently running on your desktop. We'll get, we'll get to that. Don't worry. Of, of course, you know me, I'm going to, you know, rip this apart and ask a lot of hard questions, right? Uh, well, so, one thing, yeah? I had a thought, um, I'm sorry, keep going. No, oh, okay. You want to pop it in the chat? Yeah, I'll think about it in a second. I'm sorry. It's all good. Um, oh, it, it was um, notifications. Notifications, just my perspective. When that phone keeps dinging, uh -huh. and also when you have your iPhone connected to your Mac, yeah. uh, every time you get an email, you get a notification across the screen and stuff like that, these notifications can be a real time kill, I find. A real oh, distraction. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can change all of those and that's probably an entirely different talk. So Amethyst has all of her notifications off. I do too. My, my ringtone is off. My, my phone doesn't ding. My computer doesn't ding. Yeah. Uh, I, I do revisit my inbox more than just at the top of the hour. Cause I was yeah. showing you, I do it in between tasks. 
we'll get that um, in in the next. And I want to I want to keep rolling in the interest of time to make sure that everybody um, gets this. And then I'm I'm definitely available to stay for questions. Um, but so you're going to move messages that require more than two minutes to answer and messages that can be answered later to a separate responses required folder, right? Or requires responses. Set aside time each day to respond to email in the requires response folder or chip away at the mail in this folder throughout the day. Again, same source, right? But here are some things that, here are some reasons why it might not work and or other solutions. And I reordered it a little bit because uh, I think it makes more logical sense. Uh, so delete or archive. You can set up a rule to auto archive items that might be needed for reference, but don't need to be reviewed in detail. Or like John said, unsubscribe if you're really not ever going to read them, right? But if you're like, oh, you know, this might, sometimes I want to read these, um, Oh, Lee says in Gmail rather than a separate responses folder, I start them. Yep, exactly. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So um, there's, there's ways that they can just go straight in there. And if you're looking for information, you just go to that folder. They don't even hit your, your inbox. You don't have to manually move them. So process. If your job allows you to do this, right? So if you're like in customer service or something like that, you need to be responding to those client emails right away, right? And if you, if you pick the top of the hour, it's really easy to spend an entire hour on emails. It's so easy to get lost in your inbox. So set a timer or um, check your mail 10 minutes before the top of the hour. So that the top of the hour then is like, oh, okay, got to go to the next thing, right? It's so much easier when you have um, classes or appointments that start on the hour versus like 15, 30 is like uh, 45 is always hard as well. Like those quarters are just complicated. So forward items. I recommend that you update the subject line if it's needed. Work to be clear and concise with your requests and avoid see below on a forwarded email. Instead, recap it quickly and then say see full email below for more details, right? Let them know, we've talked before about this, let them know what you need from them clearly and then the additional information is there if they need it. So, Oh, goodness. I think this was working yesterday. I apologize, friends. Uh, you're seeing behind the curtain. So um, respond immediately, right? He says, if they'll only take two minutes, respond immediately. But again, I say, will they? Set that timer, right? Um, the separate requires response fil fil folder out of sight, out of mind for me. If, it, if it's in a folder, it's done. And for reference only, I will not naturally go back if it's filed. So Lee says he puts the star there, a flag, right? But make sure that you're not just flagging everything for follow-up because you're basically just, you've diluted the quality of that flag, right? And unflag when it's done so that it's not still, okay, high priority, right? The flag says, I'm here, pay attention to me. Um, set up, set aside times for follow-up, both a.m. and p.m. Once a day is not enough, especially if you own your own business, right? There's gonna be things that pop up, clients that email you, changes to maybe even your schedule that come across via email. Um, and, and those things are important to make sure that you're checking up on. And then I always leave my email client open because oftentimes that I'm working on are follow-ups, outbound emails. Um, so it's okay to leave it open. Just avoid the inbox when you're doing focused work. Um, and Lisa is also I have rules that automatically put emails from certain senders of a certain types of folders bypassing my inbox. A lot of many thousand emails are in these folders. I never see them unless they want to. Things might be periodic. Yep, that's exactly what I said before. 
Um, and Michelle says, timers have been key for me. Awesome. Okay. I don't know. I apologize. My, my PowerPoint had like multiple pages that I swear don't exist in the original document. I don't know what's happening popping up this morning. Uh, review email subjects and responses. Review the emails you're receiving and try to determine why you're receiving them. Is there anything in your outbound communication that can be tweaked? And Pablo says, uh, good grief, Lee, that's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, and Kat, Kat Harvey blames the gremlins, I agree. Uh, so can you have copy paste response? right? Can you have something uh, or can you automate it, right? Can you have just something that, that triggers a change? Absolutely. Can you create a form for project requests so that the requesters can provide you with all of the information you require and eliminate back and forth via the email, right? Canned answers to often asked questions. Exactly. Um, even if you don't want your client to utilize the project form, you use the project form so that you know that you're gathering all of the information that you need. And be as clear and concise as possible in your outbound emails. This will come back to you as you continue to model it for others. It will be reflected in the emails that you receive back. Uh, when I trained customer service, I would say, can you write an email that receives a yes or no answer? or a list of questions that are yes or no answers, right? So the client can easily just go yes, 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 no, instead of open-ended questions, right? And, and we, in some areas, we wanna ask those open-ended questions, but when it's an email, open-ended questions, I think should be a phone call. I think that they should. That's more of like a discussion and, and those types of things. Um, and if you, if you are working with a client, you should know what, what to kind of say and what to kind of do. Um, and then the other thing is, um, if, if you're writing an email, just make sure, read it out loud. We often have things in our head and we have like words missing or it makes sense, but if you actually physically read it out loud, um, there's a better chance that you'll catch when it doesn't make sense and someone's going to write back and be like confused or I don't know. Right. And, and they're going to, they're going to like come back and be like, or not even like be ready to respond to it. Right. Like it's, it's just not going to happen because they're going to be like, I don't even get this. I'm overloaded. I can't even deal with it. Um, so last actionable item, if you didn't already, add reoccurring activity to your calendar to review your inbox. Rinse, repeat. Awesome. I know we jammed a lot of stuff into that uh, 20 minutes there. So uh, John says, I have a hard time remembering adding a polite greeting, like good morning. Sometimes I just go right to the point, which does not have much personality to my message. Um, so I'm probably guilty of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm just, you know, I'm like, Hey, hi, here's, here's what's going on. Um, depending on your relationship level, if you have like a, a cut and dry, pragmatic, straight to the point relationship with your clients. Um, and when it's in person, you have that contact, then, then you're good. Um, I, I have not had, uh, complaints. Thank you, Lee. Uh, it makes email sort of like texting. It does. It, it, it does make email kind of like texting. Um, so any questions? I know we, like I said, we jammed a lot of stuff in there. Anybody have any comments real quick? Lee, Pablo, Kat? Well, I, I think the big takeaway is we should be strategic in how we deal with our email and get a repeatable process that works for us rather than just kind of hack at it and be inefficient and ineffective. Yeah, I agree with that. You have to have a plan. And I, I really think, just, just to my point, I really think unsubscribing is huge. A lot of people are getting a lot of emails that they just, they don't even want. So I do have to say, with unsubscribing, 
by the way, try to unsubscribe to political campaigns. You can't. You'll unsubscribe, and a couple days later, you still get them. It's tough. Uh, or companies or vendors. Sometimes, you know, if they have, once they have your email, you're always on their list. And they'll go a time where you're not getting the emails, and then all of a sudden, they're popping up again. Yeah. You, you know, Pablo, you can't even unsubscribe, like, the, you can't put it on the blacklist for the robocalls either. Yeah. Political yeah. campaigns. Right. The, you, can, you can block sender and uh, designate them as jump. There you go. They'll just use a new number. I think they're all junk anyway. The yeah. cool thing about Gmail, and maybe other people have it, is... Um, there's a built-in unsubscribe button in a lot of the Gmail emails I get, for, you know, so I can just, instead of going to the bottom and looking for that manager subscription, a lot of times I can just boom, hit it. And also with Gmail, if they're getting too out of control, just mark them as spam and they'll be done. Yeah. Well, and of course I don't get any political emails, so, but all the other emails seem to work that way. I bet you get a lot of uh, emails about phishing. No, I get no emails about phishing um, because it's too much. I actually don't subscribe to very many personal emails at all. I'm, I'm busy just dealing with the important tasks of the day. I mean, I, I've got Chester Del Cryer on there just because my boy Steve comes every every week. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep subscribed to that. Now, <laughs> thank you, John. Question though: Are you more likely to go to? Google to search for some information when you're looking for it, or are you going to go search in your inbox for that newsletter that has that little bit of information? You're going to go to Google when you're ready. You're going to go to Google when you're ready. And so um, being realistic about what you're going to go back and look at is one of the biggest things, mm -hmm. right? What, what is your bandwidth? What are you actually able to consume in the time that you have and not what should I consume, right? What am I actually going to consume and retain? Because you can spend all day reading newsletters, you know, reading magazines that come in, reading, you know, newspapers that come in and how much of that information is is really going to be retained for us long term um whereas if you search out and say okay here's this information and then you make that decision and you you say okay i've i've gained the knowledge that i that i can and then you know shut it off right step step on to the next project um but that that's again about boundaries and that that time management. Uh, Michelle says, anyone else catch John's use of the word transpondence? <laughs> that's Michelle. That's Michelle with a with a Michelle Johnson with a J. <laughs> so that's too funny. One a thing that I, one of my uh, mentors taught me that the basis of it was was just do not chase your inbox. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of times people are guilty for having their, their phone on all the time and getting all these notifications and, and, and really reacting. And I think it's natural to feel like you have to react to a notification. But, you know, I, I find that that's a huge distraction and that I, I can't answer the phone while I'm building a newsletter for my client. It'll never get done. So I have to wait. You know, I have to wait. So just not reacting to your inbox and not reacting uh, to your, your notifications I, is huge to having uh, product productivity. So um, I 100% I agree with that. I also want to add on that, that you reacting in the time that you have, right? So there are times where I am working on a huge project and I am on call. So whatever time of day the client calls or a client email comes in, like I have to respond within five minutes to confirm that they, they got it right. Or that I got it or that I have that information. So they can then take that off of their to-do list and get it off of their brain. It's now on my plate. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to drop everything and handle that. I'm still going to poll and then rank it on my priority poll. 
Um, but there will be times where I go, you know what, this is going to blow up if I don't tackle this right now. And so I do have to, you know, put things aside, but I make sure that I always go back to whatever I put aside. Um, and, and just even knowing like what is on the horizon, you know, I'm on this, I'm on this call. I'm taking my mom to the doctor later today. I'm out of the office for most of the day today. Do, am I worrying about what emails are coming in? No, because last week I prepped to make sure that everything in the first two days coming back from vacation and today not really being in the office, I made sure that everything was taken care of. Right. And, and long past, uh, you know, so my next, my next deadline is Friday, right? So nothing, nothing is happening with a extreme deadline in the next 24 hours. Yeah. So there really shouldn't be anything crazy coming into my inbox. I'll check it maybe twice today, but I'm not going to be like stressing about what, what's that email that came in because I know where my projects are and I know that, nothing is falling through the cracks. So, Laura, do you, Laura, would, 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 I'm sorry, was somebody else coming through? Yeah, I was going to ask Laura a question. Go ahead. Um, so, Laura, basically, you're talking really mainly about work emails. I mean, uh, I have different email accounts for different organizations so that they don't interfere with my job, you know, with my work email. Yeah. Um, because sometimes, you know, you get, I get tons of emails about different things. And I don't even want them in my work email box. So it's just way too distracting. Mm -hmm. So I'll have different email accounts for different things. Like I have an email account, anything internet that's going to be a lot of junk mail, it goes in a separate email account that that's all it's for. I'll look at it when I get around to it. There's no rush for me to get to that email account. Exactly. So that's that, smart. If you, so I have that as well. Like my crux organizing at gmail.com. That's the one I typically use to sign up for any events and that kind of stuff that I'm going to get on a mailing list for my Laura at Crux Organizing is what I do for my clients. So I know if it's coming in there, it's typically, you know, that I do have them all come into Apple mail and I have separate mailboxes in there, mm -hmm. but and I have separate notifications um, and different sounds on my phone when they come in. And so if I'm, if I have my phone away and I've turned off notifications on my computer because I'm working hard in something, I know based on the tone, if I need to be like, oh, you know what? I've been expecting that email from that client. I know it's gonna come into this email inbox. Let me just take a peek at that. Um, so, but again, it, it is what works for you and figuring that that out. Um, I don't have a CRM. I don't know that I want or or need a CRM. Um, I don't have hundreds of clients. I have you know twenty to thirty clients that I've worked with over the entirety of my business. And when they're, you know, when they're active, they're active and I can keep track of all of those other things in a different way. Um, you know, as it grows, I am looking into CRMs, but again, I, I very firmly believe that technology is only as good as the habits that you have. A box without habits is a pile of crap. A CRM <laughs> without habits is an expensive you know, thing if you don't have those habits. And I know that um, Kurt has a really great CRM that's coming out um, that I am intrigued by because it makes a lot of things uh, easier and streamlined and all of that kind of stuff. Mariana has <laughs> bananas now, <laughs> um, right? And so, you know, I I'm, I'm technology agnostic um, but if it supports you, that's great. If it's as simple as a timer and, you know, an Excel spreadsheet, that's fine too. That's awesome. And one last comment. I know guys, if you got to jump off, you got to jump off. We're all running a little bit. We're having a great discussion. Yeah. Um, communication is key, obviously, with customer service. Is it 
would you think, you know, when you're looking at those at that inbox and you're facing some of those long replies, do you think it might be good just to send a quick, hey, I got this and I'll be getting back to you shortly? Yep. So um, I recommend doing a uh, confirmed as received, uh, especially if it's if it's like the client is just, you know, FYI or this kind of stuff. Um, give them a give them a time period of when you'll get back to them, right? So like I will, you know, I will respond in full by end of day today. Um, you might even clarify like and say, you know, I will respond by end of day today um, and they might come back or, or you can say like, is that, you know, does that work for you or did you need this sooner, right? So you're asking that information, um, you know, again, if, if we're really playing this game, they're going to have an email that says, here's when I need this, right? Here, here's when I need this by versus just sending you an email, right? They're going to share with you if, you know, if I'm working with an entire uh, company, your inbound email is going to give you all that information. So you don't even have to ask that back right? It's literally going to be clearly defined of what you need to do and when you need to do it and when it needs to be returned back. Um, yep. So that can help you prioritize as well. Um, but then make sure that you're putting it somewhere. And again, it's not just sitting in your inbox going, okay, I need to get back on that. Mm -hmm. Right? Because again, you're using your inbox as a to-do list. And it needs to be reflected somewhere else, whether you have to, uh, you know, put something on your calendar to say, here's, you know, here's what I'm going to respond to that email. I need an hour of uninterrupted time to do the research and complete the project that's being requested of me, right? That should go, that should go on your calendar because that is something that is a scheduled um, item that needs your attention. So again, like we could literally spend a whole workshop talking about how to respond to emails, how to write better emails. I do have one <laughs> about that. Um, and I teach my clients how to write emails to their clients that get responses where they have, you know, 30,000 unread emails in their inbox, but yet we send an email and it comes back with a response in like four minutes because they go, oh, that's coming from, you know, Laura or whatever my, you know, client's name is. Um, and I, I know that they're going to utilize my time wisely and I know it's going to be a quick response. So they don't go like, oh my God, I have that long email from Laura, right? Coming in. They, they just respond back to it and we get to move forward. That's awesome. Any other comments guys before we wrap up? You know, Laura, you've done another, you've done another excellent job. Does somebody else have something? Save the chat, guys. Save the chat. And Laura, uh, I'm also going to, this has been recorded. I'm going to go ahead and, and edit it up real quick. I'll remove all those bad slides. You know, don't worry about that. Please don't worry about those slides. We were all able to read them, and they all looked awesome, and you're an awesome presenter, and you went right through it just like you're supposed to. Great job, Laura. Well, and, and hey, you got to see like, right, that improv. You just, you just roll with it. I very That's easily right. could have been like, oh my gosh, like whatever, it happens. I'm human. Sorry, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've got Laura's speaker sheet. She, I mean, how many workshops do you have on that thing? 16? Uh, let's see. It's about 12 or 16 workshops and I'm, I'm able to, to hand pick which ones I want for you guys. So there's you know, so. 14 that are on there, but I, I do have more, but those are like the most requested. And then I, I do provide like hybrids and that kind of stuff. And of course, you know, anytime I'm going into a business, we will make sure that it is for them. But those are the ones that if you're like, you just want me to come in and give you a presentation, those are the ones. You've been an invaluable resource to this group, Laura. Thank you so much for being a part of this family. And we really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye, guys.